unreservedly and commend it to the House. Thank you. Uh, the Honourable David Parker. Speaker, can I begin by uh, responding to something that John Hayes said, uh, which was that he said that the changes to the tax system made by the National Party in their last term of government made it fairer. <laughs> made it fairer. Well, I mean, the National Party has a different definition of fairness to this side of the House. Because, yeah. what's that? Oh, the, uh, thank you, yeah, thank right. you, Dr. Norman. The yeah, TUI, right. TUI board, billboard response to that is yeah, right, because, because, well, well, actually, we did, we, we, we did campaign on reversing some of them because they were so unfair, because 40 per cent of those income tax cuts went to the highest 10 per cent of income earners in New Zealand. It was only. Well, it actually relates to the comments that your own member unwisely made, Mr Goldsmith, in this debate. Um, and for him to say that that made the New Zealand tax system fairer does not stand scrutiny. In reality, the only people who did substantially well out of the so-called tax switch were people who managed to switch their taxes by paying less, while the overall proportion of taxation that was paid by the vast majority of New Zealanders went up, i.e. the proportion of total tax that was paid by the people who are already wealthiest in New Zealand went down, and the proportion of tax that's paid through GST and PAYE in re respect of low and middle income earners, their proportion went up. So the relative position of high income earners went up, and everyone else relatively went backwards. So don't call those, don't call those, those tax cuts Fear, uh, please, uh, Mr Hayes, because it doesn't stand scrutiny. The other thing those tax cuts did was they, they you know, we had this, as uh, David uh, Clark, Dr Clark said, and we've had Russell Norman running this issue this week as well. Thank you for doing that, Mr, uh, Dr Norman. Um, we, we, we've had this fiction being run by the National Party that the budget deficit isn't partially their own fault. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they come along now, have, having added to the deficit through their tax cuts, which they pretend were broadly fiscally neutral by using a very loose definition of broad, uh, when <laughs> and, and, and very you know, yeah, that's right, in a very broad definition of neutral. The reality is the Treasury's own forecasts in respect of the uh, budget package found that they were fiscally negative, and the shame of it is that the, the Treasury in New Zealand, despite the fact that since then the deficit has got worse, the Treasury have not done any analysis as to why it is so much worse and how much of it relates to the tax package. And why is that? Well, we actually don't know, but the suspicion is that it's because on further analysis, it's not even by the, the National Party's sort of abuse of the English language as to broad is disproven by the fact that the hole in the government counts is substantially caused by their so-called tax switch, which was for the benefit of the top 10 per cent of New Zealand and under which everyone else went relatively backwards. Mr Speaker, I want to um, turn to another instance of tax unfairness and, and the lack of wisdom in, in the government's approach to tax legislation. Last year, New Zealand had an $18 billion deficit. It wasn't all the government's fault. Some of it was from tax changes, but not all of it. This year, it's about $12 billion, probably closer to $13 billion. We'll know by the time we get to the, to the budget what the actual figure has been. Next year, it'll be about $6 billion, and the following year, it'll be about gone to zero. So, uh, and that's the case whether it's under national or labour. We'd have got back to, to, to budget surplus about the, about the same time as well. But if you were running uh, so close to the wind as the government is, and you had a deficit that large, why would you be giving it an unfair and unnecessary tax breaks to foreign lenders into New Zealand? Because that's what this bill does. The approved issuer levy is a substitute for paying tax. The, it does, Mr Bennett, and if you don't understand that yet, after having sat on Finance and Expenditure Committee and heard all of the debates in this, you really, there's not much hope for you, and perhaps you should give back your accounting certificate to the society, because that's exactly what this bill does. And if you don't understand that, I'm sorry, you weren't listening to submissions and you didn't read the bill. 
What happens in New Zealand for some borrowers is that, for some lenders into New Zealand, they normally pay non-resident withholding tax, so that when interest is paid to the lender, to the New Zealand company, or to a New Zealand individual, or the New Zealand government, the interest that they earn incurs some tax. Now that tax rate is not set at the same rate that we pay on income tax on our income in New Zealand because overseas people don't get the benefits of everything under our tax system. They don't get a direct benefit from health services or education services and they don't use our roads and they don't use the police. So they don't pay the full rate of tax in New Zealand just like in overseas countries New Zealanders don't normally pay the full rate of tax uh, for income that they derive from those companies, countries. But they do pay some tax because those other overseas countries do gain some benefits of what governments do in New Zealand. They get the benefit of an educated population, they get the benefit of the enforcement of the rule of law, they get the benefit of a healthy population who can turn up into the workplaces that pay the people that can pay the interest and, or that work in the factories that pay the interest, and so they do pay some tax and they pay it through non-resident withholding tax at a lower rate. There's another exception to that that we allow in New Zealand, or have historically allowed in New Zealand. For some lenders into New Zealand, instead of charging them non-resident withholding tax, we charge them an approved issuer levy. Now that approved issuer levy is at even lower rates than non-resident withholding tax. It is not at a punitive rate now. What this legislation says is, look, oh, look, you can avoid that at the moment by legal means of tax avoidance, for which loopholes haven't been closed. And so what does the government do? Does the government close the loophole and ensure that they've got a fair tax system with people that are receiving income from New Zealand paying some rate of tax, albeit lower than, that New Zealand, uh, than the rate that's paid by a New Zealander? No, the government doesn't do that. Despite the fact that they're running a probably a $13 billion deficit there, the government says the answer is to take it to zero. So they take the approved issuer levy to zero. Well, there'll be no avoidance of that because there is nothing to avoid. This is absurd. We should not be reducing the tax paid to, on, on earnings by foreigners investing in New Zealand to zero. We should not be reducing it to zero. They do get the benefit of, of taxes that are paid in New Zealand as by others. It's not going to increase in any material way the money that's flowing into New Zealand. If you were going to try and incentivise more money into New Zealand, you actually wouldn't do it by giving a tax break to these guys. You'd give it by giving a tax break to someone that's going to be investing in a new company that brings new jobs. Mr Speaker, this part of the bill is just silly. It's just silly. Why would we give a tax break to these people taking their tax rate to zero? National Party's quiet because there's no answer to that. There's no answer to that. There's no logic to that. There's no logic. Look, we'd all love to have the benefit, well, not all of us, but lots of us would love to pay zero tax and have a bit more money in our pockets. We certainly need it because our wages aren't growing up at the same rate that they should be and a lot of people haven't got jobs. But why give a, a zero tax rate to some lenders into New Zealand? And if we're giving it to those lenders, why don't we give it to all of them? Where's the logic there? Why don't we give it to all of them? There is no logic to this part of the bill uh, and it should be call for what it is, which is bad policy. And it's another example of economic mismanagement by the government. This is the same government that this week blocks the Treasury even being called into Treasury to be called to account for probably hundreds of millions of dollars of additional losses, additional losses through the Crown Guarantee Scheme. They, this government pretends to be good managers of the economy. They want another example for you, Mr Woodhouse. Well, how about foreign affairs? $9.2 million wasted. $9.2 million. Well, it's actually another example of why there's such a hole in the government's accounts to make it necessary that we have taxation remedial matters bill being passed in this House to improve our tax system because the economy is performing so poorly that the government is not collecting enough tax to pay its bills. So, Mr Speaker, uh, this, uh, this legislation does have some good points. We've acknowledged that. And, uh, but that point in respect of the approved issue of levy is just nonsensical.
I call Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, um, I rise to speak.